C span is 20 feet. EI is constant. So <clears throat> as this is flexibility methods, what we do is first we determine the statical indeterminacy of the problem. Here it is two degrees indeterminate. So two redundant actions should be chosen. And we will choose, choose these redundant actions such that our calculations are easy. Next slide now, if you see the vertical reaction at B and the vertical reaction at C, we choose those one as our redundant actions. Now, how we fix the direction of these redundant actions that is arbitrary, you can choose them in the upward direction, you can choose them in the downward direction. So here you can see AR1 and AR2, these are the redundant actions and we have chosen them in the downward direction. So downward direction is becoming our positive sign. So AR matrix is now AR1 and AR2, which are unknown at this stage and DRS corresponding to them now in the original structure, we see if there are any preconditions. If there are no preconditions straight away, we record them as zero, zero. And if there are any preconditions, we record them accordingly. So now here we don't have any settlement at B, no settlement at C. So we record them equal to zero, zero. So DRS1 and DRS2, these are the initial support rotations and translations corresponding to the redundant actions one and two, which are zero in this case. So that's why this matrix is becoming zero. Now remember, uh, at frequent intervals, I'll be stopping my lecture and I'll ask, I'll be asking you that if you have any questions. So, in that particular time, you can ask me questions if you need any clarifications or anything. So, then you can turn on your mics and then you can ask me. Other than that, your mics should be also turned off. Now, we are making this as a statically determined structure, which we will be known as release structure. So here you can see A, B, C. At B and C, we have removed the redundant actions now. And you can see this cantilever as our basic determinate structure. Now here this note is important when the support settlements and redundant actions are in opposite direction to each other, they will give DRS sign to the uh, DRS sign. And if, if they are matching, so it will be a positive sign for the DRS values. Step number two, we are coming now here. We will generate our DRL matrix here. It is written DRL matrix. So how it is going to be generated? This will be the release structure under the actual applied loads. Now for the beams, I'll be using the conjugate beam method corresponding to AR1 and AR2. If we can find out the displacement due to these actually applied loads, that will give us the DRL1, uh, DRL1 and DRL2 values. Here you can see this, uh, this is the basic determinant structure and it is loaded with 1.5 k per foot and then 20 k of pointed load. Conjugate beam method now you will have to uh, visualize and you need to refresh your memory again about the conjugate beam method. First, we need to make the conjugate beam. How it is made? It is having the same length as that of the original structure. You have the length now. How to describe the support conditions, the boundary conditions. So fix will become free in the conjugate beam and free will become fixed in the conjugate beam. This way we make the conjugate beam. Now, once the conjugate beam is formed, we load it with the M or EI diagram and that acts as a uh, loading for the conjugate beam. Now, we have a fully uh, described conjugate beam. Now, once we have this, so at a section, if we find a moment, that will give you the deflection in the actual structure. And in the conjugate beam, if we find a shear at a section that will give you the rotation or slope in the actual structure. So that is the 
now corresponding values. From here now what we do, we draw the bending moment diagram. How the bending moment diagram is drawn, we go back to this slide now. At each now section, what, what we do, we find out the bending moment values directly. You can do it like this 300, how it is coming. It is coming from 1.5 times 20, which is becoming an equivalent pointed load here. So 1.5 times 20 is 30 and times the moment arm now. So moment arm is 20 divided by 2, which is 10. So 30 multiplied by 10, it is giving us 300 kip fit. Similarly, here you can find out, here you can find out. Now looking at the loading diagram and looking at these values now, you, you should be able to draw the bending moment diagram. So here it is becoming the bending moment diagram now. Here you can see this two degrees, it is coming from this UDL. No loading, so this is becoming first degree, no loading, this is becoming first degree and here we see the bending moment values and divided by EI. Let's, this, uh, I value was 2i, so this will become 300 divided by 2ei in that case. So this will become 150 divided by ei. So you have to be much careful while uh, writing this m or ei values. Next now, here now we see this is the conjugate beam here, fix to free and free to fix you can see and it is loaded with the m or ei diagram. So here you can see now. Now corresponding to AR1, if we can find out this moment now, that will give you this DRL well, one value, which is the deflection corresponding to AR1. And let's see if we can find out the moment in conjugate beam that will become the DRL2 values. From these simple geometries, you can find out those values. For a moment, you will need the force that is loaded in this case, which is the area under this uh, you see these vertical lines, which is a trapezium. Here, this is a trapezium, and here we see two degrees curve. So, if we can find the load and the moment arm, we can find out the moment at any section. So, W1, W2, W3, and then X1, X2, and X3, if we can find out. So, next slide this W1, W2, W3, this is W3, not W1, uh, W2, uh, X1, X2, and this is X3, not so you need to make this correction and here how we find out for trapezium and the area under any curve what is the relation between the area under this n which is the degree of the curve and the area so here you can see it so already we discussed this in the classroom next now drl1 now you can see w1 times x1 plus 10 plus w2 times x2 so this was the moment at the uh, AR1 location. You need to write this down and I'll go back to the diagram from where we can verify this. DRL1 is equal to W1 times X1 plus 10 plus W2 times X2. So let's go back there. If you have written this, let's go back here now. This is so here we are taking the moment, moment about C, M, C in the conjugate beam, it will be equal to W1 times X1 plus this distance, which is 10 feet. So W1 under the bracket X1 plus 10 plus W2 times X2. That was what we had here. here it is. Similarly, DR2, this is, should be equal to M, C in the conjugate beam. And when we simplify these numbers, DRL1 and DRL2, we have these numbers. 15.685 and 44.685 divided by EI. Now, the compatibility equation was involving four parameters. One was DRS, which we found in step number one. One was the AR, which we declared unknown in step number one. Other was DRL, which we found in this step number two. Now, only thing now the parameter left is the flexibility coefficient value. So, which we are going to find out in the third step. So, third step is coming now. Compute the values of rotation or displacements in the primary structure corresponding to the redundant locations 
when primary structure acted upon by the unit actions are computed the values of flexibility matrix f first apply a unit value of ar1 at reference point 1 and compute the values of flexibility coefficients f11 and f21 already we discussed what is the first subscript showing and what the sub second subscript is showing if you see here the sub first subscript script which is shown by the white color in this box so it refers to the position of interest where we are going to, we are finding out the displacement the second subscript is showing to the unit load position where the unit load is applied so this is the uh, meaning of the second subscript now here in this case we will apply this uh, unit load turn by turn corresponding to the redundant action the structure is statically indeterminate to 2 degrees so two times we will be revising this analysis process here ar1 was in the downward direction it was at location b so here you can see now one cap we are applying in the downward direction this is the conjugate beam now in order to draw the m or e i diagram we are finding out the moment values here now so one times zero it is giving you zero cap moment the load cannot be transferred to the right because it does not have any support so it is traveling to the left now and what will be the moment at the left it will be one times this distance which is 20 feet so one times 20 is equal to 20 cap foot here the conjugate beam you can see again fixed to free and free to fix now here this is m or ei diagram 20 divided by ei and it is becoming a straight 1 degree because here we have 0 degree so this is becoming 1 degree we don't have any load here the shear force will be having 0 degree and it is first degree now F11, which is deflection corresponding to AR1 due to unit action, means it is a flexibility coefficient, and F at one due to one, F at two due to two. Now we can find out. We already know the relation between the actual and the conjugate beam values. Now, first we need to find out the load of this triangle. which is half of base times this perpendicular so half times 20 times 20 so it is becoming 200 or ei and we can find out the distance also from this less load intensity zero load intensity the moment arm will be 2/3 of this horizontal distance so 2/3 of this 20 which is 13.33 so 200 times 13.33 that will become our f11 and f21 will become equal to 200 divided by ei times 13.33 plus this distance which is 20 feet so that will give us f21 here we can see these numbers this is how we find out the w1 this is how we find out the x which is 13.33 f11 we found 200 divided by it, ei times 13.33 and f21 which is wx w times x plus 20 so here we get this number so this way now if you see f11 f21 which is actually the first column of the flexibility coefficient matrix that is constructed in order to construct the second column of this flexibility coefficient matrix now we need to apply the unit redundant action corresponding to uh a r2 and here we see now their situation this is a r2 so corresponding to that in the same direction one cap is applied now to draw the moment m or ei diagram we need to find out the moment value so 1 times 20 this is becoming 20 cap feet and 1 times this 40 it is becoming 40 cap feet and here you see the conjugate beam and this is now m or ei diagram the conjugate beam loaded with the m or e i diagram now this h portion this is showing you that when you are taking now the 
moment about B now, so only this H portion will be included. And its weight or its area is becoming 600 over EI. This is when we take the moment about B. But when we take the moment about C, then this whole triangular portion will be included and its area, which is in turn is its weight, W2, it is becoming 800 divided by EI. So remember when we are finding out moment about B now, so 600 divided by EI and times this distance from its centroid to B, that is becoming your MB now and that will give you your value of F12 and that must be equal to F21 which we found in the previous slide. Now MC you can find out very easily, it will be the area of this triangle times two third of this distance which is coming 26.67 so that way you can find out F22. So we go to the next slide and there you can see all these numbers. So here you see now F12 exactly it is coming out equal to 46 is divided by EI and F22 is becoming this value. Remember F12 it is not matching the F21 it means there is something wrong with the calculation so we need to revise. Next now we not write very nicely this flexibility coefficient matrix. This is the flexibility EI is taken out as common and two triple six and here we have four six is four six and twenty one three thirty one. Now all, when all the three parameters, these one F values, DRS and DRL values, these are found, we can find out the AR values now. So in step number four, we solve the compatibility equation now. So coming to the compatibility now, here you can see this is the inverse. We took the inverse of those big numbers. So that is why it is coming out in these decimals. DRS one S two or zero because you were no, not having any pre-settlements. And then DRL1, DRL2, we found out, so we are just found. Remember this minus minus, this, these values are by default there in the equation. But in actual, if you get the DRL value, let's say that is coming out minus, so you need to put that minus with this number, so minus and minus will become positive. Now, when we solve this, so it is AR1 and AR2 are coming minus 29.36 and minus 11.76. Minus minus signs are showing now that the initially assumed directions of AR1, AR2, those were wrong. We need to just reverse the direction. So here you can see now AR1, we are reversing the direction. Instead of downward, we are making it upward. The magnitude is 23.36. 29.36 and AR2 it is 11.79. This is 76 and this is 79, not big difference, but this should be exactly this value. Now, rest of the problem you can solve by the equilibrium, but you can do it by the matrix approach also. For that case, now we go to step number five. And step number five, now how we find out the member and actions, we assume at certain cross-section, now let's find out these. This is, this is going to be your choice. And now in terms of the availability and ease, you can find out the values. AM is the member and actions, which is here. Let's this M1, M2, M3, and AM4. M4, if you see, already we found this value, which was 11.76 or 79, something like that. Here, if you want to verify that value, let's you have kind of time, so you can verify this value by using this approach. Otherwise, you don't need to find out this thing again. So AM is equal to AML plus AMR times AR. Now, from where AML values will be coming, these will be the corresponding values from the analysis of the determinate beam where we applied the actual loads. And remember from the same, we calculated the DRL matrix. 
So we calculate from the same the DRL matrix and from there you can find out the corresponding AML values. AMR values will be coming from the analysis of the determinant structure where we applied the unit load corresponding to the redundant actions. First column will be generated from where we found the F1, 1, F2, 1, F3, 1, like those values, the first column of the flexibility matrix. Second column of the AMR will be generated where we will provide the unit redundant action corresponding to AR2 and from where the second column of the flexibility coefficient matrix was generated and so on. AR already we found, so now it's simply the uh, matrix operation now. When we you do this, so you can find out all the member end actions, which will include the shear forces, the moments at the member ends, you can find out. And after that, what we do, we can write those on the uh, structure. The structure is fully analyzed and then looking at the loading diagram and this shear force and bending moment, we can very easily draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams. Now compute AML values here. Now you can see AML values. This is now the basic determinant structure under the actual applied loads, 1.5 kip per foot and 20 kip. Here you can see. Now, how we analyze this basic determinant structure, which is just a cantilever structure. Here, we don't have any support, so zero. The load is traveling towards the support now, where A, we have a fixed support now. So just to the left of this section, what will be the reaction? It will be 1.5 times 1, so 1.5 kip in upward direction. And just to the, this will be just to the right of this section which we are taking at what for one foot and just to the left of that section will be 1.5 in the downward direction here at b if we want to find out the uh, reaction so this will become 30 kip from where this 30 kip is co coming 1.5 times 20 which is 30 so it is in the upward direction just to the left of this section at b it will be 30 kip in the downward direction now under this one, you can find out, but we don't need to because we don't have any vertical reaction here. We have a moment here only. Here, what will be the reaction? It will be 1.5 times 30 plus 20. So this is going to be, so this is kind of find out, finding out the shear force and bending moment values at various sections. These moments already we have found and you can verify this. So, from here now, you can see the, your positive directions are coming from here now. AM1, 2, 3, 4 in the upward direction. Now AM5 counterclockwise, AM6 uh, if it is to the left. So clockwise and if it is to the right of the section counterclockwise, this is my positive. Similarly, AM7, I'll see. Uh, uh, you can see what is the positive direction. So now we will be comparing with this one. If our AML values are coming in the same direction, so it means those are positive, otherwise negative. So here now it is in the upward direction, so it means it is plus 50. Here it was downward, already we show it in the upward, with, but with this negative 30, it is showing that if we make it in downward direction, then we don't need to show it as minus 30, then we, need, we will be showing it as a 30. To the right of this section B, we have 30 in the upward direction, so it is 30. Here we have 0, so 0 is recorded here. This is in the same direction of AML5, so it is 1100 plus here this 600 is in the same positive direction. This, these positive directions now, they are decided from the AM positive directions. If they are matching positive with AM, if not matching with AM, then negative. M7, you can see it is 300, so 300 is recorded here. This is how we make the AML matrix. Next, now we need to find out the AMR, and in AMR, the first columns we need to construct. So, compute the AMR values. How do those will be computed? First, apply a unit action at redundant location one, and then at redundant location two, as shown below. 
redundant location one this was b location in the same direction one kip is and if we analyze this determinant structure the values corresponding to the am those will be becoming the amr values now so amr4 you can see zero amr31 it is zero amr41 down so it is initially down so this is minus one kip we are showing here amr11 it is one kip in the upward direction amr5 it is 20 kip feet here it is 10 1 times 10 so this is 10 and here it is zero so this very quickly now we can make our first column of the amr values which will be 1 minus 1 0 0 20 10 and 0 then the second column to generate the second column corresponding to ar2 we uh, apply the load we analyze the basic determinant structure and the corresponding values which are amr 1 2 2 2 3 2 we find them this is the analysis now the corresponding values if you see 1 2 is coming 1 2 2 is coming minus 1 m r 3 2 it is 1 and 4 2 it is minus 1 similarly 5 2 6 2 and 7 2 you can see and here now these values are recorded Let's verify this MR72. So if I go to the previous one, MR72, it is in the same direction, so plus 20, and that is why this plus 20 is recorded here. Now, A, A, R value is already known, so now we are in a position to solve this uh, matrix multiplication and addition. We can process this, these matrices. So to process now you see all these values these are the r and remember with the original signs minus minus this ar is coming when we multiply them we get all the member and actions now 8.88 corresponding to a m1 now so here we record this 11.12 so here just to the left it is 11.12 just to the right 11.24 then at C, we have 11.76. Then moment, it was 42. This was coming 46.4. Let's, it should be with minus sign there. Let's see now. This is here, minus 46. So minus 46.4. This is how, why the direction is reversed now. This direction is reversed. And here, AM, 7 plus 64, so plus 64.8 we require. Now, this is a complete analyzed structure now. And if you add them up now, look, this one, 11.12, shear to the left, shear to the right. So this will become reaction at the support, which, which was, I think, 30 point something. So this 29.36, how much it is coming? this 11 and this is 29 and this is exactly it is coming the same number 29.36 29.36 and to the right you see 11.76 so this is 11.76 now when we have the loading diagram and we have these member and actions now we don't need to do anything else now we we, we can draw the shear force and when only this point now you can find out the distance, you can find out the bending moment value here and you can record this. So this is the completed now shear force and bending moment diagram. Now before going to the uh, next problem where we, we will be involving the displacements now which will include the translation at the supports and the rotations at the supports I'll take a pause and I'll ask you if you have any question now. You can turn on your mics and you can ask me questions. A CR, where are you? Mr. Rejaz is asking something? Yes, sir. Ah, okay, yes, sir. Mr. Mohammed Ehtisham Arshad. Yes, sir. So how do you find this lecture now online? Are you comfortable? Yes, sir. If you can 
سر اگر آپ پرابلم کو کسی سافٹ ویئر پہ استعمال کریں یا جو زائٹ بورڈ ہوتا ہے اس کے اوپر کریں تو زیادہ سر کمفرٹیبل ہوگا اس طریقے سے سر تھوڑا کم سمجھ آتا ہے نہیں آلریڈی تو میں نے وہ کیا ہوا تھا نا آئی ڈیڈ دس ان دی کلاس روم آلریڈی ہاں تو یہ نیکسٹ ڈیفیکلٹی ایف یو ہیو دیٹ شوڈ بی کمنگ فرام دی کمنگ پرابلم Right? I walk you through in the classroom and now this was kind of repetition of their thing. So you should be at least comfortable with this problem. In next classes, we will be finding out how to facilitate you in your work. Okay? Okay, just okay. now you want to hear any question? Yes, sir. سر یہ جو ہم نے اے ایم آر جو فائنڈ کر رہے تھے اور جو سیکنڈ ریڈنڈنٹ ایکشن پہ ہم نے یونٹ لوڈ اپلائی کیا نا سر تو وہ سلائٹ ذرا آپ وہ سلائٹ سر آپ ذرا ڈسپلے کریں اچھا میں کر لیتا اچھا دس از نا یہاں پہ آپ پوچھ رہے ہیں یس سر تو سی سی پہ جو ہمارے پاس یہ ون کپ کے اب جو ڈو ریئیکشن آئے گا وہ ون کپ نہیں ہوگا یہاں پہ آپ نے سر مائنس ون لکھا ہے تو پھر وہ تو اس کا ڈائریکشن اپوزٹ ہو جائے گا تو پھر یہ کیسے اس کو اپوز کرے گا نہیں اسی پوائنٹ پہ جب آپ آ رہے ہیں نا یہ اپوز نہیں کر رہے ہیں اسی پوائنٹ پہ تو نیچے آ رہے ہیں نا ایٹ سی پہ رائٹ ایٹ دیٹ لوکیشن ایٹ از ان دی ڈاؤن ورڈ ڈائریکشن ٹھیک ہے تو سی پہ یہ نیچے کی طرف ہوگا اینڈ جسٹ ٹو دی لیفٹ ایٹ ول بی کم ان دی اپ ورڈ ڈائریکشن دین سر تو سی پہ جو ون کیپ لوڈ اپلائیڈ ہو رہا ہے اس کو اپوز نہیں کرے گا یہ ون کیپ تو جسٹ ٹو دی لیفٹ یہ اپوز کرے گا نا اس کو تو پھر سر یہ تو پلس ون کیپ ہوگا نا سر آپ نے مائنس ون کیپ لکھا ہے تو پھر یہ تو اس کی ڈائریکشن تو پھر نیچے ہو جائے گی تو پھر یہ کس طرح اپوز کرے گا نہیں آپ کا پازیٹیو ڈائریکشن جو تھا نا ایئر ٹو کا دیٹ واز ان دی ڈاؤن ورڈ ڈائریکشن ون کیپ اگر آپ دیکھ لیں دیٹ از یور پازیٹیو ڈائریکشن تو یہی تو کہہ رہا ہوں سر لیکن آپ نے ویسے بھی اوپر مطلب شو کیا ہے نا یہ مائنس ون کیپ جو آپ نے لکھا ہے تو اوپر شو کیا ہے نا تو پھر اس میں تو مائنس ون لکھنے کی ضرورت نہیں تھی نا مائنس لکھنے کی ضرورت نہیں تھی صرف ون کیپ مطلب صحیح ہوتا نا نہیں تو یہ اسی اسی لوکیشن پہ تو نیچے آ رہا ہے نا سر یہ تو مطلب ون کیپ اوپر سے ڈاؤن ورڈ لگ رہا ہے تو ون کیپ نیچے سے سر اوپر نہیں لگے گا نیچے سے اوپر لگے گا نا سر جسٹ ٹو دی لیفٹ جب آپ آئیں گے سی نے سے نا تو وہاں پہ اوپر کی طرف لگے گا اب سی لوکیشن پہ یہی نیچے آ رہا ہے ٹھیک ہے نا جسٹ کوائٹ ایٹ دی سی لوکیشن اٹ از ان دی ڈاؤن ورڈ ڈائریکشن تو وہ تو آپ کا پازیٹیو آئے گا لیکن جسٹ جب آپ لیفٹ کو آئیں گے نا اس سیکشن کے تو وہ آپ کا اوپر کی طرف ہوگا ٹھیک ہے سر ٹھیک ہے اور ہم سپورٹ ریئیکشن کہاں پہ یہ شیئر کہاں پہ لے رہے ہیں جسٹ ٹو دی لیفٹ آف دس سیکشن سی لے رہے ہیں ٹھیک ہے تو وہ اوپر کی طرف ہوگا تو وہ تو آپ کا نیگیٹو ڈائریکشن ہو گیا نا اس کیس میں اچھا نیکسٹ دیکھیں ہمارا ہمارا سائن کنونشن کیا ہے ہم اوپر کی طرف لگاتے ہیں نا Okay, let me take this phone call. Oh. 